for literally an hour. Okay, so, um, you know, in the realm of this, uh, let's talk about, you know, some popular theories about uh, the Bitcoin price decline. Uh, so this is an article from Cointelegraph, and this says Bitcoin price 8K bounce now aligns perfectly with the stock to flow chart. Uh, you know, when I read this article kind of in preparation for the show, because uh, I kind of wanted to talk about the stock to flow model. Uh, but the reality is there is like one sentence in here. Um, right here. There is one sentence in here that talks about the stock to flow model. And the rest of this, this the, the rest of this article is just prices are down, right? So, you know, we'll read this together. It says, Bitcoin escaped a fresh dip to 7,500 on September 25th avoiding the worst scenario analysts had warned about before its major crash. Well, where did you pull that number from? Like, where did 7,500 come from? Explain that to me. Uh, Bitcoin circles 8.3K having prediction that says data from Coin360 showed the largest cryptocurrency pairing. Some losses between 8,000 and 8,500 on Wednesday. Previously, Bitcoin had bottomed out below 8,000 on some exchanges, capping a nightmarish 12 hours in which the pair shed almost 20%. Previously, one trader warned markets were set for a dive to 7K levels. Uh, yeah, I mean, but you've also had like 90 traders talking about, you know, $6,000 levels. You've had traders talking about $8,000 levels, $9,000 levels, $7,000 levels. All of this like hindsight, oh, my fib line was right. Oh, my triangle broke to exactly the measured move. It's all crap, man. None of that's real trading. Um... That stuff only works in hindsight uh, because all of these traders that do this stuff don't just have one or two lines on their chart. They generally have about 15. And so, yes, probably price might have the possibility to bounce off of one of your lines. And the moment that it does, guarantee you, they take to Twitter and say, I told you so. Don't you see? I drew that fib. Come join my, you know, come buy my product. It's crap, dude. It's not real trading, man. It is the most in my opinion, despicable form of analysis out there is this hindsight nonsense. And these people are not account. Most of the, most of these people who want to call tops and bottoms and price targets and blah, 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 have so many lines on their chart. Uh, it is beyond ridiculous. Uh, no sane, rational person can actually form a game plan around that. And they're not accountable when they're wrong. You know, kind of like this, uh, this plan B thing where he's got, you know, price, you know, plot it out for the next two years. Well, I mean, well, yeah, we'll wait and see if you're right in 2021, man. There's no accountability for being right. No, no accountability for being right. And that's not good. Uh, various theories soon emerged about what caused the route, including a $1.2 billion transaction on an exchange, which could have sparked market panic. Yeah, we've seen about like 17 of those when Bitcoin was consolidating and it didn't cause that. So that's nonsense. Uh, proponents also dispelled rumors that a previously alleged drop in Bitcoin's hash rate preempted the price decline. Uh, as Cointelegraph reported, hash rate charts displayed a 40% drop earlier in the week, but commenters subsequently said the readings were inherently inaccurate. So again, that is assuming that the market is, so that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense uh, because the hash rate did drop significantly and the market will respond to that. It doesn't matter if you come out after the fact, and you're like, well, no, 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 man. You, like if you actually understand hash rate, you'll see that that doesn't actually mean anything because that is a lagging indicator of hash rate. It doesn't matter that the, uh, the difficult. So just to let you guys know, uh, there is a the, the difficulty increase that is uh, coming in on Bitcoin uh, is going to make S9s unprofitable. Right. And a lot of miners are still mining with S9. So a firmware upgrade was released to make the S9 squeeze out all the efficiency that they possibly can. Uh, and this allows them to uh, significantly reduce their power wattage per use and actually make the S9s profitable with the difficulty increase uh, that is coming up for Bitcoin. Now, um, because of that, miners around the world are feverishly uh, upgrading the firmware on their S9s to have this new, uh, to have this new efficiency. Uh, in you know, in, in anticipation of the uh, the difficulty increase, in which at which point, at that moment, their S9s will no, no longer be profitable. So I think that's probably the most significant reason why the hash rate dropped suddenly. Uh, because, for example, if you just have any kind of Bitcoin node connection, uh, you would have seen um, outbound peers increase uh, while noticing a lot of nodes drop off the network. So 
hash rate did decrease and the market could have probably did respond to that in some degree. You had a lot of confluent factors that happened to cause price decline. But again, you, you didn't need to know any of that. It helps to know some of that, but the chart told you to go short anytime around the 17th to the 22nd. Very simple, clean and objective. Uh, and then you can be like, well, of course that happened. But again, would you rather be right or would you rather make money? I think we all agree. So, um, so the fact that because most people don't understand anything about hash rate, most people don't didn't had no idea. You probably no offense, but most of you probably had no idea about the S nine update or that they would be unprofitable with the BTC difficulty increase. Well, that's true. And so, the majority of traders out there also don't know, and they're just responding. They're just responding, right? So it says now attention is turning to the run up to Bitcoin's 2020 block reward having event. Yes, the 2020 block having event, the block reward having event. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, where Bitcoin will finally reach its all time highs. Yes, in anticipation of the happening, as we've seen every year. Hooray, yippee, woohoo, yes, yay, awesome, sweet, cool. Uh, <laughs> now, I don't think we want to discount that, but I also just want to, you know, trade the technicals, don't trade the fundamentals. Uh, according to analyst Plan B's stock to flow model for Bitcoin price, which has traditionally given accurate predictions, you mean when he released it like, you know, a while, you know, like a couple of months ago, like, so it historically gives good results, right? So there's no repainting in his system, right? Yeah, of course, probably. Uh, the mean Bitcoin price in the run up to next May is 8,285. As such, under current conditions, Bitcoin is no longer trading higher than its planned levels in a year's time. Uh, what does that mean? Well, of course, if his model is correct, then that means that any price underneath the median should be bought, right? And any price above the median should be sold. This is basic reversion to the mean strategy, right? Buy below the median, sell above the median. And then they go on to talk about back. They go on to talk about Bitcoin, uh, you know, uh, Craig Wright's vision leading the altcoin crash, crashing about 25%. We've seen worse. It will continue to see worse. So just wanted to point this out, man. You know, you got to be, you, you know, I, I read these articles and you got to read them with a pretty discerning eye because, you know, again, Coin Telegraph's just trying to get clicks and eyeballs. And, you know, hey, you guys have seen my thumbnails. We're guilty of the same thing. But at the end of the day, this says Bitcoin's price 8K now aligns perfectly with stock to flow chart. I mean, you mention it for one sentence in here, dude. Literally one sentence. Uh, come on, dude. And then the rest of this is just, price is down. Okay. Okay. Whew, I need more water. That wasn't enough. Live streaming is hard sometimes, guys. Maybe I just talk too much. Maybe it should be less talking and just maybe more some blasting techno in the background and like random lines on the chart. And, it's, you know, I'll just like leave for like an hour and it'll just be like. I'll be like some of those 24-7 streamers, right? My chart will just look like that. And then I'll leave and like come back and be like, yeah, man, Bitcoin. That's what I've noticed with most of the 24 uh, seven streamers, but Hey, you know, more power to him, man. I respect the hustle. It's tough to do, man. Yeah. Bitcoin swan song. Yeah. And hopefully you guys know, I mean, I do it for fun, man. Okay, so let's look at the weekly candles. And then we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, and before we do that, just a second here, gentlemen. Okay, let's go over and look at that weekly candle. Uh, so on the weekly time frame, where's kind of the buy-in target? It's super wide. Forgive me. 
but 7432 to 6178. Now let's, before we do that, and I don't think that you should be blindly buying in those levels. Again, that is the definition of picking a bottom. Don't pick a bottom, identify a level, see if you see a reaction off of it. See if you get on the time frame that you trade on, whether either a reversal signal or a trending signal and then go. Okay. Uh, but we do have some negative things coming in here on the weekly. Obviously, we have Minx signaling. Actually, last week was the first. Uh, last week, Minx did give a short signal on the weekly. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Watatar Explosion gave a signal above the dead zone, but not above the explosion level. Um, but I know some people have modified their settings for Watatar Explosion, so it's quite possible that they could have actually gotten a signal out of that. Kits, thanks so much, man. Uh, and then, of course, Parallax, actually, on the weekly time frame, uh, got negative right back here. So Parallax had you weekly bearish uh, back here in August and had you short. Uh, Parallax also had you long from February, caught the entire bull market, and had you sell in July. And gave you one fake out week. And So there's a loss right here. There's just no denying that. But has you short off of this candle and has you short. So again, what is the purpose of this indicator? Would you guys like to see how, how long Parallax kept you in a short on the weekly time frame? Uh, the 15th of January, 2018, and it stayed short until February, 2019. So, I don't know, you guys tell me. Seems like a pretty good indicator to me. I've done a lot of work on this. This is probably one of the most difficult indicators that I've had to code. And here's the thing, I haven't even added bells and whistles to it, but the logical code was beyond difficult. But I digress. Target hit. <laughs> he just earned my sub. Thank you so much, sir. Highly appreciate it. Thank you.